Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you some important information about breakers and wiring sizes if you're looking to install a Tesla wall connector. So that information is coming up. So let's say you just got a new Tesla and you're looking to install a wall connector, which is you know kind of the easiest and most popular way to charge your EV from home. And there's lots of misinformation about wiring and breaker sizes and things like that when you're looking to put in a wall connector. So I want to go over the go over that information with you and kind of set the record straight so that way you don't start a fire at your house, especially if you're trying to DIY this. So first thing you want to do is figure out what breaker your panel can handle. So that's something you're gonna have to figure out yourself. Um, if you have enough amperage or service to do like a 60 amp breaker, which is the biggest you can do on the wall connector and you know probably what you wanna do if you have like a Model Y or a, maybe a Model S or Model, y, Model X with the bigger batteries. So I'll figure that out first. And then of course, also you wanna have the right breaker, breaker for your panel as well. So that's this here. Let me show you a better picture. So, you know, every every house is gonna have different service panels. So I have actually an older one with a type CH. And basically the only difference is gonna be the kind of how it hooks on to the service panel. So you may have an in BR, type BR, which is a lot more common, or maybe a square D are really common as well. So make sure you figure that out so you don't have before you do the install, so you don't have to go back to home home depot like twice or whatever. So if we look in the manual, uh Tesla's wall connector manual. You'll notice there's a little line here that says for the 60 amp breaker for basically 48 amps of continuous charging, you need to use a minimum of six AWG or six gauge wiring at 90 degrees Celsius uh, rated copper. So that's basically the only six gauge wiring that is rated at this 90 degrees is THHN. So that's this here. So if you're gonna put in a 60 amp breaker, Make sure you use 6AWG THHN this. A lot of people, for whatever reason, will use 6-gauge Romex, or it's also called NMB, which is this here. And this, this uh, wiring is not rated for 60 amps. So let me show you the chart. So if we look at this chart here, NM, so basically, just because you have 6-gauge wiring, 6AWG, the type of wiring it is, they're, they're rated at different amperages. So a lot of people just think because you have six gauge Romex, I'm just gonna call it that instead of NMB because it's easier. Um, a lot of people think that six gauge Romex is rated for a 60 amp breaker because it's quote unquote six gauge. And that's actually not right. So if you look at this chart here, NMB six gauge is rated at 55 amps. So you have 55 amp rated wire on a 60 amp breaker. You kind of do the log logistics. Uh, your wiring is going to melt before the breaker pops, which means you're going to start a fire. So if you're going to use six gauge wiring for a 60 amp breaker, it needs to be THHN. So really six gauge is rated at 75 amps, which is the way it should be. So that, that means that, you know, it goes to 65 amps, the breaker pops and your wiring doesn't melt. So that's how you want to do it. So just be very aware of that when you're putting in a 60 amp breaker. Also note too, that if you're gonna put in six gauge THHN, it's just straight up wiring. So as you see in my, in my picture here, it's literally just wire copper in insulation. So by code, this needs to be in conduit. It can be in a variety of conduits. It can be in like flex conduit, uh, which is like metal, or what I used is LFNC, which is liquid tight flex conduit. It's a plastic PVC mix you could put it in pvc conduit or emt which is the metal tubing that you see on outside the houses so there's a variety of conduits you can put in but this type of wiring needs to be in conduit don't just throw it in the wall because it's not to code and <laughs> that's not that's gonna that's gonna cause you problems later like if you have rats in your wall they're gonna eat your wiring and it's not gonna be good if we look at another chart here there's a lot of debate on 6awg thhn because at 90 degrees yes it's right at 75 amps and at 75 degrees, it's right at 65, which is still fine for a 60 amp breaker. But at 60 degrees, it's right at 55 amps. So you've got that same problem with like the 6 gauge Romex. However, this is at 
if you notice here, 60 degrees, there's no THHN rating. So this is kind of where there's a big debate because it's still 55, but it's not THHN, so it should be fine. Um, and as you saw earlier, um, Tesla recommends AWG, six gauge AWG at 90 degrees. So we're looking at the chart, 90 degrees, THHN is right here, it's right at 75 amps, so you're good. So just keep that in mind. Now, the reason why there's a big debate is because of this 55. So if you wanna be on the super conservative side, you can put in four AWG, either um, THHN or you could do Romex as well. So if you look at that, that's what this is gonna look like. It's gonna be stranded. Um, and the, the problem is with four gauge is that it's very hard to find. So this is literally the only four gauge they had at Home Depot and you can't even buy it by the foot. So I'm not spending five grand on wiring for like a couple feet of wire, that's just silly. Um, another thing I also don't like about the four gauge is because it's Romex, you've got three different strands in here, but you only need, you've got three strands plus the ground. You only need two strands in the ground. So you're gonna have this white wire here that you have to just cap or do something with it. Basically it's not gonna be hooked up, so you're just wasting copper at that point, which is just kind of silly. So to fix that, you could buy 6.2 or you could buy 4.2. And I don't even have a picture of it because it just basically doesn't exist. So it's a very hard to find 4.2 Romex. Um, if you can find that, that would be ideal if you want to be on the conservative side, because then you're only going to have uh, the red, the two hots, the red and the black and the copper ground. So that's the types of wirings you can use on a 60 amp breaker. It's literally just those three, 6 AWG THH, THHN or 4 gauge Romex or four gauge THHN if you can find it. So if we're working on, working on a 50 amp breaker because maybe your panel can't handle a 60 amp breaker or whatever, then there's more options. Then you can use the, you can use the 6.3 Romex, which is what you would put uh, on a NEMA 1450. It's still a 50 amp breaker, same thing. And so if we go back to the, the chart here, six gauge Romex, 55 amps, which is fine for a 50 amp breaker. So oh, you could use this, but then you're going to have that same issue with the extra neutral that you don't need. So it's just going to be capped off, which I just find annoying because you just have all this extra wiring sitting there. So what you could do in that case is you could get 6.2 Romex. Uh, so see, it only has the three wires. You've got black, white, and ground here. I find this also annoying because now this white is really supposed to be a red hot. So you're going to have to tape it red or you could tape it black too if you wanted to. So I just find that kind of silly too, because it's not the actual color. So you have to wrap it to make it quote unquote, the right color. So you could use this too for a, a 50 amp breaker and this will be, and this will work. And then because it's sheathed, you can just throw it straight inside the wall and it's fine. That's the code because it has the sheathing to, to protect the insulation of the actual wires. Another thing people do for 50 amp breakers is uh, if they're, if you want to future proof yourself, maybe you're going to, you're thinking about getting a wall connector in the future, but you just don't want to do it right now. You could also put six AWG THHN like your wall connector into the 50 amp breaker. That's totally fine because this is rated way higher than the 50 amp breaker. So no problems there. And then if you do change your mind in the future and you want to get a wall connector, then your wiring is all set up and you just need to take the NEMA 1450 off and you're good to go. So that could be an option for you as well. So take that into consideration as well. And then lastly, if you're on like a 30 amp breaker, so that'd be a NEMA 1430. That's a little bit slow, but you could actually use the wall connector for that if you wanted to. Just like the 50 amp, you could do that too with a wall connector or you could put a NEMA 1450 in. So if you're gonna put a NEMA 1430 in or you're gonna throw a 30 amp breaker on the wall connector, you could use 10.3 as the lowest you wanna go. Um, but again, same thing, you're gonna have a neutral here that you need to just cap off and not use. Uh, I don't know if they have 10-2, but if they have 10-2, that'd be more ideal because then you don't have the extra neutral there. If we look at the chart, 10 gauge wiring, and then B is good for 30 amps. So you're still okay there. If you wanna be a little bit more conservative, you could go with eight gauge, uh, AW, eight, eight gauge AWG Romex, which you could use in that's rate of 40 amps. So that's fine on a 30 amp breaker or you could use 8.2 as well. 8.2 Romex is more ideal. Because again, you've got the just the two hots in the ground, but it's gonna be white, so you gotta tape it black or red. 
one last note I want to mention is that I like when I'm putting these in, I like putting, I like having the ground at the same size as the hot wire. So if you see, I have six AWG THHN for all three wires. You can put a smaller gauge uh, ground in there. So like these Romexes, the, I mean, it doesn't show in the picture, but the ground is actually a little bit smaller, which is okay, but it may lead you to problems in the future. So that's why I like having the same gauge wiring. And the reason behind that is because the smaller ground may not be able to carry the entire fault back to the panel. And what happens is sometimes that'll trigger the wall connector to error, which means you can't use it. So if you have all the same gauge wiring with the ground and the two hots, you won't have that issue because they're all the same size. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna use Romex and you do have that smaller ground in your wall connector, uh, look out for that issue because it could be an issue for you. So small chance, but it is there. So I just didn't want to take any chances. You know, I didn't want to have any issues. So all the same wire for me. So that's it. That's all the information on I have on breakers and wiring. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that, you know, kind of made it a little more clear which size wiring you should get for which size breaker, because it's really important, especially when you're using these uh, EV chargers, EVSCs, um, on continuous load for three plus hours. Uh, you don't want to be using small, smaller wire than required because it's going to start a fire and it's not going to be a good day. So hope that information was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.